Hello, I'm Michael Glass from michaelglass.com, where we focus on making informed decisions about our financial future. Before we begin our video, you want to start off with our disclosures. Any symbols you see today should not be inferred as a trading recommendation. No matter what form of investing you choose, stock, forex, futures, options, they all have a level of risk associated with them. Any strategies we show today are for informational purposes only. Future results are not guaranteed. And finally, any investment decision you make is solely your own responsibility. Trade at your own risk. So this is our stock market technical analysis trading plan. In our video, we'll look at the past week's economic calendar and also look forward to next week. We'll see what happened as far as the most recent price action to identify key support and resistance price levels. We're going to look at the charts of the market leaders, Apple, Google, Goldman Sachs, Priceline. We'll take a look at those. We'll look at the dollar, gold, and crude oil charts to see if there's any leading sentiment. And finally, we'll have an education spotlight at the end. As we look at the week that was, we can see all three major indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ, S&P 500, all ended up for the week. We're not as much down as we were before. But overall, we saw the market finding uh, support at the August lows. And overall, we see the market basically staying within that range, S&P 500. Basically around uh, 1180 down to about 1120-ish. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we come to the charts. But the market has been ranging since August with little blips up and little blips down. Um, the US overseas, not a lot of news going on. The European Central Bank did decide to keep its lending rate the same. That wasn't received well. Um, the British, they did keep the rate the same while raising their asset acc uh, accumulation up about $75 million from 200 to 275 well, overall, not much going on there. Uh, corporate news, I'd be remiss not to mention the passing of Steve Jobs, uh, the CEO of Apple. And clearly, um, it is my opinion, and it should be widely accepted, that he is going to be one of the greatest innovators our country has provided. Up there with Thomas Edison, Henry Ford, uh, Walt Disney, uh, all these people who changed our lives. And clearly, Apple has done that. Whether you like Apple or not, you have to admit the impact that Steve Jobs and his company has had on our on our daily lives. Uh, economic news: the September jobs numbers came in better than expected. Um, some of that could be tapered by the end of the Verizon strike. Um, however, the private uh, jobs uh, definitely came in higher than expected. Uh, but it was, you know, it was tempered. You know, the market pre-market on Friday was up after the news of the uh, non-farm payroll employment situation. Um, but then we sold off from there, and then we kind of rallied back to parity uh, by the end of the day. So what we're seeing, again, is the market um, not really having a catalyst. Um, and, and take a look at next week. What's important about next week is that our next round of earnings seasons begins. We have Alcoa on Tuesday. JP Morgan on Thursday, but look at the economic calendar. Remember, Monday is Columbus Day. The banks are closed, but the market is open. Nothing on Tuesday, nothing on Wednesday. Crude inventory from Wednesday's moves to Thursday, nothing on Thursday. And then we do have consumer sitting on Friday. So what that's saying is, as we look for catalysts, most of the economic data hasn't been good. So how is that going to break us, especially for our bulls, to the upside? However, if these companies start um, breaking in earnings, and showing that they're still making money, perhaps the market will take that in a, in a good way and break out of this range back up to the highs, or they may disappoint and send us back down to the lows. Let's pull up the charts and talk about this consolidation and range that the market has been in. Here we are starting off with the S&P 500 daily chart, and you can kind of see where we, we did extend below the... Uh, August lows. Here's our August low right here. And we basically hit that and then um, came right down and broke up, made a hammer out there. So we tested the August lows, we tested the support, and now we're starting to consolidate a little bit. Will we make another run up to the 50 moving average? We don't know. Uh, we need to go ahead. We see the 50 moving average as resistance. We'll go ahead and draw a trend line also. Just to get a gauge of what's going on here, you can kind of see, even though we haven't made it to the 50 moving average, you can kind of see that if we 
do get above this price level here. Let's go back to pin. If we get above this 1180, which is a familiar price range, if we get above that, we, uh, you know, it would make sense for us to test 1200 and a 50 moving average. Our downtrend line here from August will break that, and and if we can get some volume behind that, we can probably make a move. Now. We can see on the indicators that they're basically seeing a neutral, and you can say why. Well, because even though we have our dip out of the range, we primarily have been in this range of 11.20 to 11.80 for about two to three weeks now, uh, with some minor blips in and out. So you can say we have a descending wedge. Our downtrend lines in August, the 11.20 that we're watching, 11.25 that we're watching as support. And eventually, we need to resolve ourselves one way or the other. We also need a catalyst. Maybe earnings seasons will be that. Maybe it won't. But you can see the range that the market is in. It makes sense to go up here and test 1,200, test the 50 moving average, and to come right back down if we don't have a catalyst to keep the market going higher. As we zoom out to our weekly, we can see uh, a little bit better of this descending wedge that we're talking about here. And uh, what I was looking for is to see if I could zoom in for you using a different platform right now. But you can you can see the descending wedge. Again, we need to break out of this one way or the other. Um, the support of the 200 moving average on a weekly is also holding up currently. Indicators, we're trying to go lower here. Back to you, trying to go lower. Uh, Stochastics and RSI heading higher. Either way, they're neutral. Why? Because this is showing even more weeks of where we've really just gone side to side. Basically since August. Testing the lows and going back up, testing the 50 moving average. Zoom out one more time to the monthly. And we see what we have here. Our downtrend line is, is uh, st still there. But now we have the 200 moving average, which held up as our last pullback point here. And now we're pulling back to it again, and it's holding up. So as long as that 200 moving holds up, we can still say nicely that we are in this uptrend from the 09 lows. But again, it has to hold up. Indicators here are rolling, uh, have rolled over. Stochastic way ahead. MACD and RSI rolling over. So there's still room to go lower on the monthly. Now, as we go back to daily and switch over to the NASDAQ, We can see The same uh, choppiness on the daily chart here, um, 2350 acting as support, coming up and testing 50 moving average, 2550 as we come up here. Similarly, if we draw our downtrend line somewhere in here, whoops. you can actually see we have a little bit further to go to break out of it. Basically our downtrend line and the 2550 lines are together and that would be a break of the 50 moving average to run up here to the 200 moving average. Indicators, um, MACD's up, up in the middle, RSI is kind of in the middle. So we're getting sideways actions again because we're seeing that in our price action. Zooming out to the weekly. Some of the same information here. Uh, and again, you can really see the descending wedge. You can see the 200 and the 2350 acting as support. So we'll have to see again what's going to be our catalyst to move higher. Here we can see the indicators moving lower. Uh, so we're getting a little bit of oversold on the weekly. And then finally, zooming out to the monthly on the NASDAQ, we can see the 50 moving average acting as support. We can see our, our pullback that we need to honor. And there's more room to go lower on the monthly. So we may come down here, test the 50 and the 200 on the monthly. 
But overall, um, the NASDAQ is a little bit higher than the, the S&P 500. All of that is the same. Really nothing has changed over the past couple of weeks. Again, we've been in sideways action. Will the market finally move us to uh, a new channel that we can trade, that we can trend? We are starting off as we look at our market leaders with Apple, and we can see what the story remains the same, which is truly the market has been in a range since August. Um, really, if I took this and drag it up here, you would capture more of the range. Uh, take a look. Yeah, so you can see that that captures more of the range. Um, so overall, uh, the market is ranging. We got a little blip out of it, and now we're back in the range. And again, uh, how is the market going to perceive uh, Steve Jobs' jobs absence? Like the market, you can see a, a bounce here off the 200 moving average. All of our indicators, though, here are weak, though. So um, we'll have to see what happens. Uh, if we, What's going to be our catalyst to move us up and down? Probably will be earnings. Next, we'll go to Amazon. Again, within the range, a little bit wider range here. But certainly, we could have came in here and, and drew something somewhere along in here if we wanted to draw a smaller range like the market um, we got the blip out of it now we're back into it testing it um, we could come in here and draw a trend line so this one we would say sideways to up Apple we're saying sideways Amazon we're saying sideways to up with a with a potential here to break out uh, let's go to Google. Google, certainly sideways. Uh, we could come in here, draw a line. There's our range. Not a lot too much coming out of it, uh, but definitely sideways on this one. Google, sideways. What about Goldman Sachs and our financial? With Goldman Sachs, we see our beautiful downtrend line here. 20 moving hours acting as support. If you wanted to, you could draw in a little line here to uh, support a, a descending wedge. But overall, the 20 moving hours acting as support. And what's going to be the catalyst to move us above that? Again, maybe earnings will do that. But with the economy uh, and financials being tied in so much with the economy, maybe not. Um, but definitely a beautiful downtrend. Google, I'm sorry, Goldman Sachs down. Uh, what about uh, Netflix? Netflix, you know, again, we talked about this last week about this huge drop that Netflix is on. Um, and then we have our, our, our earnings gap down, and uh, we've kind of got started at least finally base a little bit. Um, again, uh, I'm one of those folks who also said, what the heck was <laughs> Netflix doing changing our pricing policy? And, and I, uh, I I did not double up. I only have one. I kept the streaming. So, um, you know, the market's still uh, uh, breathing that in, digesting that. And again, earnings, if, they, if their earnings come out and show that their new pricing model work, you will see Netflix begin to take a tear. That's the time to really start looking at getting into Netflix when they start to show that the new pricing model is actually going to work. And finally, Priceline. With Priceline, we can see that we're in a, a similar sideways action. We've got 450 of support, little downtrend line we're watching at 540. But overall, we see a sideways market. You might say sideways up. Some may say sideways down because of its last move here. But we stayed up here at the top a little bit longer than the market did. But overall, it's sideways. So that's Apple is, Apple is sideways. Amazon was sideways to up. Uh, Google sideways. Goldman Sachs down. Netflix sideways to down. And now we're saying sideways for price line. That's in agreement with the market. And so what we're hoping for is that our new round of earnings will give these stocks for our bulls the catalyst to move higher out of this range, or for our bears, be disappointing and move us down out of the range. Now let's take our other market sentiment indicators with gold, crude oil, and the dollar, and see what they're telling us about the market. All right, so as we look at gold, we see a similar uh, 
price action of consolidation here for a couple of weeks. Market is breathing. The global economies have not changed. And so gold, there's no flight to gold right now. Uh, and so we get the sideways price action, 200 acting as support. Also watching around 15, uh, 50 as support with the top being at uh, 1680 so about a hundred point range that we're watching the market cycle in and again if the earnings start turning in bad you'll see a flight to safety in gold and we'll see gold go back and retest the highs or we'll see gold make a, a pullback but keep in mind uh, as we go on gold and if, as we zoom out you know, here's a weekly I mean gold is still on a tear even with this pullback we're not exactly um, scaring some people I would say to start scaring some people, you might have to break 1450 because that is the last move higher. So these people, um, that, you know, anybody bought here, they're still okay. Uh, next, we'll go to crude oil, and I got to change the setting here. So just excuse me for a second. There we go. We can see this nice downtrend line. I'm still on a weekly, but you can see what's going on. Nice downtrend. So support trying to hold up here in the $75 range. $75 range doesn't really match up with this, whatever's going on over here. But there is definitely some support here. Uh, so we'll have to watch and see what happens here as we get closer to the 200 moving and its resistance, whether or not we pop back down. So crude oil is trending lower. And then we're going to finish off with the dollar. And the dollar, uh, easier to see in the weekly here, uh, still in the weekly. Uh, we broke this downtrend line that was all the way back to 2010. Slowly, we went sideways. And as the market is now consolidating, dollar is getting stronger. And keep in mind that inverse relationship. Strong dollar, weak gold, weak stock market. So as the dollar continues to get stronger, uh, that is hurting our market uh, just a little bit. But we have some resistance coming up here just above 81. So overall, with our, our market sentiment leaders, gold uh, consolidating, also waiting for some type of catalyst in the market. Crude oil is trending lower, which is good for the market. The dollar, though, is strong, and that is going to hurt the market. So we are moving on to our education spotlight where we've been talking about trade plans, what they are, what should be a part of them. And today we're talking about uh, managing yourself. Because even though you, you know you need to have a trade plan, you have to have the motivation to actually complete it. And that means doing all the back testing, defining all your objectives, knowing what your goals are, examining yourself, and really being honest about how much you need to make how much you need to save, what is your true risk tolerance, being honest all that you, and you got to be able to manage yourself and keep yourself ma motivated and disciplined to follow that trading plan day after day after day, doing the same thing day after day after day and only making adjustments as the market adjusts. And more importantly, continue to develop those skills required to uh, be successful in the current market conditions. And so that requires motivation and some people just aren't motivated. They, they're they looking for that quick solution. They're looking for that tell me now, tell me now, tell me now. It's the tortoise versus the hare. Some people want to be the hare rushing to the, the finish line while other people are taking it slow and steady and those are the ones who win the race. As you know, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. We have our free part uh, video course on high probability trading setups. Really, just gives you a framework for how to design your own high probability trading setups, and we hope it gives you a gaze of who we are as coaches, how we can help you uh, one on one develop that motivation, that discipline, that trader's mindset to be a successful trader. Um, we do have our high probability trading course, not five thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars. It's got all that same information. Takes you from the introduction to trading all the way to how to uh, define your trading plan and then how to implement your trading setups. But we really have a, at an affordable price because we want you to focus on the coaching so that we can help you take it to the next level. Um, if you're trading futures, we've got a great uh, broker for you. Intraday trades as low as $300. 23 trades if you sign up to us. And the charter package, sort of like what you just saw there, 
works on both PCs and Mac and allows you to run your scans uh, so that you can find your fast moving stocks. But in the end, it doesn't make a difference about your system or your indicator if you don't pull the trigger. If you haven't back tested, if you're not motivated and disciplined, you'll, your fears and emotions will take over and you won't be a consistent profitable trader. Thanks guys and I'll see you next time.